Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com, and hey, do you have Adobe Creative Cloud, but perhaps don't have a full version of Cinema 4D, and you want to get into all this fun sketch and tune type of cell shading applied to 3D objects? Well, in Cinema 4D Lite, you can actually do a very nice little hack, uh, and you can turn your 3D geometry into flat 2D style cell shaded type of compositions and it's fairly easy so I'm going to show you this workflow and basically just to set up the scene here I have an object or this Game Boy that has all luminant materials applied to them so flat shading and we're going to take it one step further and apply a type of cell shading and allow for shadows to be cast on my 3D object so let's just jump right in and I'll show you how easy it is to create cell shading type of 3D objects inside of Cinema 4D Lite. So let's just go ahead and we'll add a light. And if I click the light button here, it'll create a light. And by default, it's going to be an Omni light, which is basically just like a light bulb. It acts just like a light bulb. So what I'm going to do is go to my top view. I'm going to zoom out. There's our object. I'm going to move it forward and just move it to the top left of our object and what I'm gonna do is go back into interactive render region so I can see exactly what's happening and one other thing I'm gonna do is activate some shadows so we can cast some shadows with our 3d geometry I'm gonna use ray traced hard and what that's gonna do is create some very hard shadows without any soft blurred shadow edges just to keep with the whole cell shading flat materials and the first thing you're going to notice is that I turned on shadows and we have no shadows. What's going on? Well, what the problem is, if I, you can even see as I toggle my light on and off by clicking the checkbox here, that nothing's changing at all. And this is because, remember, we used 100% luminant materials on all of our objects. Now, this is kind of like trying to cast a light in shadow onto a fully lit light bulb it's just not gonna happen so what we need to do to be able to cast shadows and bring some shading back into our objects is by adding more diffuse shading to our objects and we can do this by turning on the color channels in our materials so if I go in here and maybe this red one, I'll turn on that one. And I'm also going to go in here and just right click on the color, copy it, and paste it into the color of my color channel. I'll do the same thing for my blue color here. Activate the color channel, paste. And as I'm doing this, you're noticing that by activating the color channels on each of my materials, we're getting some of this shading. We're getting some nice shadows being cast. And we're also getting some nice shading on the back parts of our objects. So we can do the same thing with this dark red. Right click copy, right click paste. So there we go. And we can actually take this one step further and just remove all of our darkened edges. So we have our materials with selections here. I'm just going to delete the selections and delete that second material. I'm going to do the same thing for my A and B buttons here. And again, remove the selections because I just want to use one material to apply cell shading type effects on all of my objects. So we can do this with the control pad as well. Remove that selection. And I think I forgot to add a color channel to this mid black so I'll do that right click copy right click and paste and you'll see we added some shading back to our gamepad so right now we still have some diffuse shading going on it's not entirely flat it's a nice look but we still have this gradation so to remove that gradation altogether this is where ambient illumination is going to come in and you can see our ambient illumination checkbox right here I'm going to turn that on now notice what happens. So when I turn that on, we totally remove all of that gradation and we just are left with like a two-tone kind of shading. And why that is is because ambient illumination 
casts flat lighting onto our 3D objects, where the only thing that's taken into account is the material color. So that's also being driven by our color channels and our luminance channels. So what I can do is go into my white material again, and if I want to get back some of that like greenish blue that was our kind of our darker color on our Game Boy body, I can simply go into the luminance channel and just change the color to something closer to what we had. And you can see that we now have this darker edge. We can go into our color channel and kind of pump up that front color. So you can see that as I'm pumping in the brighter color, that brighter white, or in this case I can change this to like a blue, you can see that that's updating on my little material preview here. And that's a little bit too much. So maybe just 110%. I think that looks pretty good. So now we can actually move our light around and you can see what's happening is we're kind of interactively casting lights and shadows onto our 3D objects with just the light and we don't have to do any material selection. So this is a much nicer option here. So one other thing we can do, if I can just move, where's our light? We can move it back to where I had it before. So we actually see the shadows being cast here. What I can do is also control the shadow by going to my light and going into the shadow options. And I can turn down the density to make it a little bit lighter of a shadow. So now you can see just very, very light shading happening. Or, you know, I can crank that all the way up. Another nice thing is I can actually change the color of my shadow. So I can go and make this, uh, let's try like a reddish. Let's see what that looks like. So now we have like this pinkish kind of shadow being cast onto my objects because it's not only mixing this color I set in the shadow, but it's also mixing with the colors in my color channel and my luminance. So you gotta keep that in mind. We can also just turn off luminance altogether and you can see that full value of that red color we chose for the shadow being represented on our objects. So now we can go in here and maybe we want just the shadow to have that bluish color and we can have everything cast that bluish shadow and just totally remove the luminance channels on all of these objects here as well. So this is that's an also an alternative that you can do right there as well. And we can also go into each of these materials and just crank up the brightness of those colors again. Actually, I need to go into this one and crank that up. And you can see we have a nice bright red color so we have a lot of control. We can either just use the color channel or use a combination of the color channel and the luminance channel to be able to kind of recreate this nice cell shading type effect on our 3D objects. So there's one more thing I want to do to really help give the illusion of 2D. So right now this looks still a little bit 3D because of the fact that our camera view still gives some kind of depth perspective. And what we can do to kind of mitigate that or remove it altogether to make our 3D composition or 3D object look even flatter is by applying an isometric type of view that will remove camera depth perspective and again, further develop our 3D representation in a more 2D view. So we can go here in my camera add a camera and we're not looking through that camera view yet until we click this little viewfinder icon so I'll activate that and I'll go into my four up view and just kind of move around you can see as I move around let me zoom out using the two key and the one keys and clicking and dragging that as I kind of orbit around using the three key here click and dragging the three key is I'm actually moving my camera in my scene. So let's just choose like this kind of view 
and again I'm gonna go for a parallel camera and what a parallel camera does is you can see immediately that it just flattened everything out all of my 3d geometry looks a lot more 2d because we removed that 3d perspective and now we can hold the three key down and kind of orbit around here as I drag my mouse that we're getting this really really nice flat illustrative geometric kind of composition with our 3D objects because of that parallel view. Now we also have different kind of views here. Isometric is pretty popular. And if I zoom out, you're going to notice that if you try to orbit by holding the 3 key and trying to click and drag, we are fixed at a locked angle. And that's kind of the downside about the isometric view and why I prefer to use the parallel camera because the parallel camera does the same thing, but you can orbit around freely. You're going to kind of notice some weirdness happening here. We just kind of sliced our object in half. Uh, and what's going on with that is we have our camera intersecting our object. And this is actually called clipping. And if we go into the details tab of our camera, you can see that clipping is enabled. And if we turn that off, that'll remove our issue. Or we can just simply move our camera out. You can think you would think that you could just zoom out like this and that would move our camera, but you can see that that's only really zooming and our camera's at a fixed position. So what we actually need to do is physically move our camera back and that'll make everything all nice and happy again and remove that clipping so just keep that in mind you can just turn that off and you won't have to deal with that at all so let's just go back into our perspective view without any clipping again we can move our light around to kind of position our shadows the way we want them to be cast all right, so that is it for me. I hope that was very useful for you. So yeah, Adobe Creative Cloud users, you have Cinema 4D Lite. You can start doing cell shading immediately with this ambient illumination uh, workflow. And uh, hope you have fun with it. If you make anything, definitely make sure to share it with me. Uh, and if you like this tutorial, be sure to like this video. And if you like my channel, be sure to subscribe. Really appreciate all your subs and your views. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye everybody.